Hello students, how are you? My name is Teacher Luigi. I'm very glad that we can be in touch through these videos. Remember guys, okay, the, the session we're covering now with this video is from May the 3rd to May the 5th, but every Monday and Thursday we are uploading videos for you and you can check them uh, anytime you like and the times you, you want, okay? So because just you have to access YouTube and uh, CNA, Centro de Enseñanza del Idioma Inglés, and then you can uh, find your uh, folders, okay, just like we have levels there. And also, guys, uh, you can access to the pet folder and just like uh, look, just like for my, my video, for your video, guys, which is this one, okay, ready? Okay, guys, so um, the session that we are going to cover uh, today is uh, from May the 3rd to May the 5th. Okay, and today we have a very, very interesting uh, class or video. Why? Because we're covering uh, some topics such as um, reported speech, uh, how to report commands, and how to report requests. That's the last step uh, that we have for reported speech. Also, guys, we have, a, we have some listening exercises, guys. Okay, so you have to pay attention. And also, guys, uh, we have a very interesting topic uh, as a warm-up, guys. And uh, you know the date, okay, maybe the 5th. Okay, so a lot of people have asked me why is uh, the 5th of May celebrated in the U.S. more than in Mexico, okay? Yeah, we have, uh, if you have some questions uh, about that, okay, so we are going to uh, find out why is that, okay? Why is a very important date? Uh, because it's very important, it's a very important day here in Mexico, but people, Mexican people that live in the U.S., they cel celebrate it very passionate, guys, okay? More than here, because sometimes, remember that, they celebrate it just like our Independence Day, which is not. Our Independence Day is September the 16th. You, you know that, okay? So, okay, guys, so are you ready? Okay, so for this session, you are going to uh, obviously to use your book. And uh, first, we're going to start with this topic, um, the Cinco de Mayo, okay? So, ready? Okay. So, let's go, guys. And we have this interesting website guys okay and uh, that is called trip savvy guys okay trip savvy and we have this article written by Susan Berbesat uh, why is Cinco de Mayo celebrated more in the US than in Mexico so um let me read for you guys because it's very very interesting guys okay and, and you know what it's going to be shocking for some of you because uh, the real thing is the following one, okay? So the title, one more time. Why is Cinco de Mayo celebrated more in the U.S. than in Mexico? Okay, and we, we have a very nice uh, pictures. Uh, you like showing some mariachis there, okay? Okay, I'm going to read for you guys, okay? So in the United States, Cinco de Mayo, or maybe the 5th, is seen as a day to celebrate Mexican food, culture and traditions. Of course, it's also a great excuse to enjoy some Mexican drinks. Many who celebrate in the U.S. assume incorrectly that Cinco de Mayo is Mexico's Independence Day. But this is not correct, remember guys. In contrast, Cinco de Mayo in Mexico is celebrated in a very low-key manner, just like very, very discreet. Students get a day off, but banks and government offices are open. The only major parades and fiestas taking place south of the border are held in the city of Puebla, where there is a military parade and a mock battle is staged to commemorate the Battle of Puebla, the event that gave rise to the holiday. Okay, yeah, remember, we celebrate the Battle of Puebla, uh, where the French army just attacked Mexico and, well, we, we, we won, okay, supposedly, okay, so... I, I have to keep on reading, guys, okay? So why is Cinco de Mayo celebrated with such fanfare in the United States? As with many holidays, a lot of celebration is due to marketing. Yes, guys. Okay, sadly, okay, it's just like a marketing, a marketing thing, okay? People across the U.S., whether of Mexican heritage or not, use the day as an excuse to eat Tex-Mex cuisine, drink Mexican beers, and prepare pictures of margaritas, and the holiday is often associated with partying. However, just 
a St. Patrick's Day is a day to celebrate Irish culture for Irish Americans, Cinco de Mayo has become a day for Mexican Americans to show pride in their own unique culture. Since it's not widely celebrated in Mexico, the holiday can be seen more as a Mexican American holiday than a Mexican one. Okay? And that's it, guys. Okay, now if you are interested, just like in, just like keep on reading, guys. Okay, you can access, you can write, uh, you, you can just like type in Google. Okay, why is Cinco de Mayo celebrated more in the U.S. than in Mexico? And then you can, you can just like keep on reading about this because we have the history of Cinco de Mayo in the U.S. Okay, okay, and then we have something about the Mexican Independence Day, which is July September the sixteenth. Okay, yep. So, okay, so here at the end it says here. So by all means, celebrate Cinco de Mayo, but do so respectfully. Throw a Mexican fiesta, enjoy some Mexican food, learn about Mexican tradition and culture, and please remember, it isn't Mexican Independence Day. Okay? Yeah, so this, I think this is a very, very interesting article, guys. And yeah, I, I also read, guys, that uh, some, you uh, like alcohol, um stores they uh, i mean mexican alcohol stores they just like uh, grab the date the 5th of may uh, and they just like um uh, throw uh, throw out these days to to have more uh, you like to sell more beers and to to you like get people together in, in just like in the in the in in the pubs and that's why uh, Cinco de Mayo, long time ago, has become a very important day in the U.S. just to sell beers and Mexican food and things like that. Okay, okay. So that was our uh, our website. I mean, today website. And hopefully you like this, guys. Okay, ready? Okay, guys. So now, um, let's go to your book guys okay so let me go this this way okay and uh, okay could you please take out your book and open it on page number 98 okay 98 and remember we are in unit number eight ask me anything okay and then we're going to uh, here we have uh, the second explanation about reported speech okay but first okay let's go to exercise number Okay, let me zoom it. Let's go to exercise number two, guys, okay? We have a listening exercise, guys, and in this exercise, we have to do the following thing. Exercise number two, listen to an interview with Nick, who has developed a language learning app. Put the questions in the order you hear them. Remember, guys, okay? You have to listen, okay? And then in your book, you have to pause the video. Tienen que pausar el video. And then, uh, okay, just like uh, click the pause. And then uh, in your book, you have to do the, the, you have to do the activity, you have to do the, the exercise, guys. And then, okay, just, just like click pause one more time and then you check the answers, okay? Now, uh, so you have to order the questions, guys. I'm going to read the questions for you. Letter A, did the users know the app's secret? B, how does the app work? C, why do users need to do if they want to use the app? B. Where does the idea come from? E. What does your company do? F. Will the app be available for English learners soon? Okay, guys. So, uh, remember, we have to listen, okay? And you have to check this exercise, okay? So, okay, pay attention, guys. Okay, pay attention. Okay, guys, so I'm going to play the audio and you have to order the questions, as simple as that. Okay, ready? Okay, guys, listen. Hi, Nick. Thanks for speaking to us today. What does your company do? We're interested in how technology is changing English language teaching and learning and we make digital learning products. Now, I know you have a new language learning app. Can you tell me about it? Yes, of course I can tell you about it. So where does the idea come from? Okay, so it works as a chatbot, 
which is software that can communicate like a human. The most famous example of this is Siri, which comes with Apple's iPhone. So you can say, Siri, find a good restaurant near here, and Siri will help. We wanted to know what a language learning version of Siri would look like. So is it like a digital teacher? You ask a question and it will answer? Exactly. A bot that helps users improve their English. But unlike Siri, it communicates via text message, not voice. Oh, why is that? Well, text messaging is really popular. So I thought that we should use texting as the way people communicate with the app. What do users need to do if they want to use the app? Our website says, have a good question about English? Text me and I'll help. The website tells people who are interested that they can just add the app's contact details to their phone contacts. And how can learners use it? Okay, so let's look at an example. Say you need to communicate in English. You're at the train station, but you don't know how to say what you want. Just text your question to the app and it will respond. That sounds amazing. How does the app work? Well, right now, it isn't actually a chat bot. It's me. Ah. <laughs> We wanted to know whether this was a product that users would be interested in. And did the users know the app's secret? I think so. Some people asked whether a robot was answering the questions. In fact, the first person who texted, a guy called Javier, was very clever. He sent a photo of a cup and the question, what can you see? Obviously, he wanted to find out if the app was human or not. A few minutes later, Javier shared the conversation he'd had with the app on Facebook, encouraging others to try it. And that's when more users started texting. So finally, Nick, will the app be available for English learners soon? Well, right now, artificial intelligence apps can't answer the sort of questions I was getting. But I'm optimistic. Remember to come back in five years because computers will keep learning. Okay, guys, ready? Okay, so remember, now you have to pause the video and answer this exercise, guys, okay? Okay, do it, please. Okay, guys, ready? Okay, so let's check your answers, guys, okay? So I'm going to show the answers for you guys, okay? So you have to, just to, to check the answers, okay? And the correct order is this one. Okay, number one, letter E. What does your company do? Number two, letter D. Where does the idea come from? Number three, letter C. What do users need to do if they want to use the app? Number four, letter B. How does the app work? Number five, letter A. Did the users know the app's secret? And number six, letter F. Will the app be available for English learners soon? Okay, that's it. That's the correct order, okay? Yeah, good. Okay, guys, so we are going to have one more. Uh, well, it's the same listening, guys, but we are going to have uh, this exercise. We're going to do this exercise. Exercise number four. It says work in pairs, obviously we can do that, but who says these things? Match speakers one to five with the comments A to J. Then listen again to check. Okay, and we have the people who, or the people or the the, or the the source of the of the saying is this one. Number one, the interviewer. Number two, Nick. Number three, the app website. Number four, anyone with an iPhone. Number five, Javier. Okay, and then we have, just let me, you like go this side. Okay, and then you have this, you have to match these speakers, these five speakers with this letter A. Yes, of course I can tell you about it. B, can you tell me about the app? C, Siri, find a good restaurant in here. D, we should use texting as the way people communicate with the app. E, Text me and I'll help. F, if you want to use the app, add this number to your phone contacts. G, let's look at an example. 
H. It isn't actually a chatbot. It's me. Eh, sorry, I. I really think you should try this app. It's great. J. Remember to come back in five years because computers will keep on learning. Okay, so, okay, we are going to listen to it one more time and, okay, with the comments, yeah, so try to, to check this exercise, guys, okay? Okay, ready? Okay. So. Okay, ready, guys? Okay, one more time, guys. Hi, Nick. Thanks for speaking to us today. What does your company do? We're interested in how technology is changing English language teaching and learning, and we make digital learning products. Now, I know you have a new language learning app. Can you tell me about it? Yes, of course I can tell you about it. So where does the idea come from? Okay. So it works as a chatbot, which is software that can communicate like a human. The most famous example of this is Siri, which comes with Apple's iPhone. So you can say, Siri, find a good restaurant near here, and Siri will help. We wanted to know what a language learning version of Siri would look like. So is it like a digital teacher? You ask a question and it will answer? Exactly. A bot that helps users improve their English. But unlike Siri, it communicates via text message, not voice. Oh, why is that? Well, text messaging is really popular. So I thought that we should use texting as the way people communicate with the app. What do users need to do if they want to use the app? Our website says, have a good question about English? Text me and I'll help. The website tells people who are interested that they can just add the app's contact details to their phone contacts. And how can learners use it? Okay, so let's look at an example. Say you need to communicate in English. You're at the train station, but you don't know how to say what you want. Just text your question to the app and it will respond. That sounds amazing. How does the app work? Well, right now, it isn't actually a chat bot. It's me. Ah. <laughs> we wanted to know whether this was a product that users would be interested in. And did the users know the app's secret? I think so. Some people asked whether a robot was answering the questions. In fact, the first person who texted, a guy called Javier, was very clever. He sent a photo of a cup and the question, what can you see? Obviously, he wanted to find out if the app was human or not. A few minutes later, Javier shared the conversation he'd had with the app on Facebook, encouraging others to try it. And that's when more users started texting. So finally, Nick, will the app be available for English learners soon? Well, right now, artificial intelligence apps can't answer the sort of questions I was getting. But I'm optimistic. Remember to come back in five years because computers will keep learning. Okay, guys. Well, hopefully you did this exercise while you were listening, guys. Okay. Okay. Let's check answers straight away, guys. Okay. And we have this one. It says, yes, of course, I can tell you about it. Okay. Who says that, guys? Okay. We have... Remember, we have five options there, okay? And the correct option is Nick, okay? That's correct. Okay, now, letter B. Can you tell me about the app? Okay, that's letter B. And the correct option is the interviewer. Okay, that's correct. Number three. Siri, find a good restaurant near here. That's very, very easy because we mentioned Siri. So... Anyone with an iPhone, okay, obviously. Okay, letter D. We should use texting as the way people communicate with the app, okay? And that was said by Nick. Okay, very good. Letter E. Text me and I help. So, okay, who said this? The app website. Okay, that's correct. 
letter F. If you want to use the app, add this number to your phone contacts. Okay, so very good. The app website, one more time. Okay, letter G, let's look at an example. Who said that? Nick. Okay, good. Letter H, it isn't actually a chatbot, it's me. Who said that? Nick, one more time. Yeah, very good. Okay, we have two more guys. Letter I, I really think you should try this app. It's great. Who said that? Javier, that's correct. Javier. Uh, letter J, remember to come back in five years because computers will keep on learning. So, who said that? Okay, Nick, one more time, guys. Okay, ready? Okay, guys, very good. Very, very good. Okay. Okay, guys, now um, let's work in grammar, guys. Okay. Let's see. Let's work on grammar, guys. Okay. And, okay, we have verb patterns with reporting verbs. Okay. Remember last lesson, we were talking about uh, reporting, reported speech, guys. And the way we report uh, statements and questions, guys. Okay. And then we had uh, some uh, reporting verbs that maybe they were new for us, but, I mean, you can understand that because, I mean, it's not difficult. Uh, the way we manage verbs to report, uh, remember, we uh, do not have only tell and say as report, uh, reporting verbs, but we have more, more than that. We have many, many more. And, okay, let's uh, take the, that point one more time. And it says, verb pattern with reporting verbs. I'm going to read for you. A. The interviewer asked, the, the, remember, these are examples, okay? The interviewer asked Nick to explain where the idea came from. Letter B, he told Siri to find a good restaurant near here. Letter C, Nick agreed to talk about his new project. Letter D, Nick suggested using texting as a way to communicate with the app. Okay, remember guys, asked, told, agreed, suggested, they are reporting verbs, okay? And typically we have two or three, we have a said, told, yes, and we have asked for questions and for a request. Okay, we're going to see that in a minute, guys. Okay, now I want you to, to take a look to the, I mean, to this uh, reporting verbs, guys, and let's go to exercise number five. Okay, and in exercise number five, it says reporting verbs tell us what the speaker is doing. For example, suggesting, okay, that's one example. They are sometimes followed by other verbs, but the structure isn't always the same. Match a verb in bold in the grammar box with this structure. Okay, remember guys, okay, we have to uh, match the verbs in bold, okay, just like ask, told, uh, suggested, etc., agreed, okay, and then we have to write them down here, okay? Yeah, okay guys, okay, do it, please. Okay, remember guys, you have to, to take a look, okay, to these examples, okay, and then you have to write, ask, told, agreed, and suggested, guys. Okay, okay, it was easy, yeah, I guess. Okay, now, number one, guys, okay, it says here, some reporting verbs are followed by two plus infinitive, for example, okay, for example, which one, guys? It's very, very easy, okay, it's there, it's there, guys, so... Agreed, agreed to. Remember, they are just like it is a collocation, guys, okay? Now, number two. Some reporting verbs are followed by someone plus two plus infinitive. For example, okay, take a look. Okay. So, for example, told. Okay, that's it. Okay, and asked. Okay, that's it. Okay, remember the pronunciation of asked because it's a regular verb in past tense. Asked, just like a T sound at the end. T -t asked, okay? Now, guys, number three, some reporting verbs are followed by the ING form. For example, 
Okay, very easy. For example, suggest. Okay, that's it. Okay, remember we we just like uh, we saw this topic in just like um, like two months ago, three months ago, something like that. Guys. Okay. Okay, guys, very good. Okay, so. Okay, let's do exercise number six. Let me just like show you guys. Okay, in exercise number six, guys, we have to match uh, numbers with letters. It says matches two parts of the sentences. Okay, and uh, number one, the app promises. Okay, and then you have a, a more, just like number two, three, four, five, and six. And then we have uh, letters, A, B, C, D, E, and F. Okay, okay, guys, please do that. Okay, remember to pause the video. And just like when you finish, okay, take your time. When you finish, just uh, unpause the video and we... Uh, see, we'll see the, the correct answers, guys. Okay, okay, please. Okay, guys, ready? Okay, so I'm going to remember. I have to. Uh, I have to start uh, just like by reading the the letters, the options with letter, and then we we have to match them with numbers: one, two, three, four, five, and six. Guys. For example, guys, let's start with letter A being the app. Okay, and it goes with Nick admitted being the app. Okay, that's it. Okay, admitted after admitted, guys, we use an ing verb. Okay. Now, letter B, to help, okay? And the app promises to help. Okay, check it, please, or correct it. Okay, letter C, to add the app's number to their contacts, okay? So, the website invited people to add the app's number to their contacts. Number two, letter C. Okay, letter D, Nick offered, number three, Nick offered to show how the app works with an example. Letter E, number six, Nick remind us, Nick reminds us, okay, reminds just like, uh, yeah, like remember, okay, reminds us, letter E, to come back in five years. And obviously, number five goes with letter F. The first user recommended using Nick's app to others on Facebook. To others on Facebook. Okay, sorry. Okay, well, the objective of this exercise, guys, is just like to practice more reporting verbs. Okay, for example, we have just like invited, offer, admitted, etc., etc. Okay, guys. Okay, re remember we have more, many more reporting verbs. Okay, excellent, guys. Okay, so. Okay, let's go to exercise number seven. Okay, and the same, guys. Okay, remember, you have to take your time and you have to do it, okay? Uh, you have to choose the correct uh, option, okay? Number seven, choose the correct options to complete the review of a new app. Okay, for example, guys, number one, let's do number one as an example. A friend told, suggest me to download the, sorry, a new app to help me learn vocabulary. Okay, so a friend. I think it's told, okay, yeah. Okay, guys, just do the exercise, please. Okay, ready, guys? Okay, let's see. A friend told me, okay, why uh, Why did I know that it was told? Because we have here an objective pronoun, guys. That's why a told, uh, told me, okay, we need someone to refer to, okay? That's it. So a friend told me to download a new app to help me learn vocabulary. He, number two, 
admitted to not using it himself, but he, and then we have two options, offered or suggested. Okay, but he suggested trying it for a few days. Okay, remember ing. Okay, we have to use the verb suggest. It, number four, two options. He, it promises, it reminds to teach. Okay, it, of course, promises to teach you 10 new words every day. The premium version is $5. But if you invite, suggest a friend to sign for it, so, but if you invite a friend, invite someone to sign up for it, you get $3 off. Number six, you can also ask your parents to pay for it. Tell them it's for studying. It's fun because it turns learning English into a game. Sometimes I agree to let my little sister play with it. Number eight. I, the only option is, very good. I offered to show you, to show my English teacher how it works. She thought that some of the vocabulary teaches it isn't very useful. She reminded, promised, she reminded me to do my homework as well and not to only study with the app. I think she's right. E I I recommend spending 10 minutes a day on the app, but no more. Okay, okay, very good guys. Okay, and maybe you um you could recall some uh, language app just like Duolingo or uh, Babel or yeah, some other apps that help us to and learn new languages, Italian, Spanish, uh, just like English as well. Okay, so I think that's a good option, guys. But uh, remember, you have to not to spend too much time on that because, uh, but, but but it's okay, it's okay. Just do it, guys. Okay, okay, guys. So excellent. Let's go to exercise number eight. And it says here, working pair rib. Read about the Turing test, then read the items 1 to 7 and decide which are the best ones to find out if you are speaking to a human or a bot. Okay, that's it, guys. Okay, so uh, now uh, we have here a very, very brief text about the Turing tests. Okay, you have to read them, guys, okay, or obviously individually. And then you have to, uh, you, we, we have some, uh, uh, you lay sentences here. You have to decide which sentences are the best one if you are speaking to a human or a boat. Okay, that's it, guys. Okay, just take your time, pause the video, read in your book, and then do the exercise, and then we check. Okay, okay, go. Okay, guys, now I'm going to read for you first and then we check the answers, okay? It says, the Turing test is a competition for computer bots, programs that try to speak the way humans do. The person talking, sorry, the person taking the test chats via text message and interacts with either the bot or with a human. The bot wins if the tester believes they are interacting with a human. Interesting. These are good prompts to use in the test. Okay, and then we have the prompt, we have the sentences, guys. Okay, guys, so let's see. Okay, you have done this exercise because you had time, guys. Okay, otherwise, pause the video and do it now. And okay, we have to decide, we have two options, guys, if they are talking to a human or they are talking to a boat. Okay, so I'm going to show the answers, guys, and uh, let's discuss them, okay? So, okay. 
Okay, number one. So, okay, so we have to, that, I mean, that easily, uh, it's easily uh, to, to mix up these kind of sentences, guys. Okay, Th that's it, because we can, we can do this exercise just like uh, with boat, with humans or robots, boats, okay? Could you give me your definition of love, please? Okay, now. Okay, number two, no. Number three, no. Now, number four. Are there any problems in your life you would like to talk about? I'd be happy to listen. Yeah, obviously, number five is not because we are adding some numbers, guys. So it's very, very robotic, okay? And number six, actually, I'm also a computer. How does it make you feel? Okay, that's a very interesting them. And that's it, guys. Okay, so one more time. Number one, number four, and number six, guys. Okay. Okay, guys. So last exercise, let me show you. Okay, guys. So in exercise number nine, okay, choose the correct verb to report the sentences in activity A. Okay, so we have two verbs, for example, number one, we have ask here, ask an offer, and then we have to, uh, to use the, the previous exercise, guys, just to rephrase the sentences and just to uh, ask uh, with could in order for us to know if we are just like talking to a human or a boat. Okay, so for example, number one, you like that you could ask it to give you its definition of love okay that's it okay now could you please uh, sorry okay uh, check number two to number seven guys okay remember you have you can pause the video okay okay pause it okay Okay, ready guys? Okay, so number one. Okay, that's it. Number one here. Okay, number one, you could ask it to give you its definition of love, ask offer. Okay, number two, you could invite it to ask you a question. Okay, invite or promise you. I, I think invite, that, that was the correct one. Okay, now let me show you number three. It says here. You could just admit or suggest, okay? What verb would you use? Okay, that's correct. You could suggest playing chess. Okay, remember, after suggest, you have to use ing. Okay, good. Okay, number four, guys. You could, it says here, to its problems, offer or tell. Okay, obviously, you could offer to listen to its problems. Okay, number five, you could, an addition, recommend or tell. Okay, so you could tell it to do an addition. Addition, just like una suma. Okay, good. Okay, one more, guys. Number six, you could, a computer, you could admit or ask. Okay, so the word that you can use is you could admit to being a computer. Okay, and finally, number seven, you could, more emoticons, invite or recommend, obviously you could recommend using more emoticons, guys. Okay, very good, guys. Okay, so enough with the book, guys. Okay, we have finished with the book, guys. And finally, we have to uh, do something about grammar, but I think, guys, the grammar that we are going to uh, talk about is just like to close the topic of reported, uh, sorry, report, report, reported speech. And it's a very, very interesting grammar, guys. So uh, that's the only thing we're going to do today. I mean, we, we, uh, along with this, but just pay attention, guys, okay? Okay, it's very, very interesting. Just pay attention. Okay, wait. Okay, guys, we're back. And let me tell you guys that we have this topic, reported speech, commands and requests for the next class. Okay, so homework for the next class, guys. You have to review 
report to speech, statements, and questions, okay? Remember, questions are, are kind of hard, guys, because you have to, apart from changing the tense, you have to change the uh, time expressions, and also we don't want uh, uh, questions in, in the way of questions are, are just like used. Okay, we have to change as well that. And also, guys, uh, maybe some uh, positive pronouns, etc. guys. That's, that's why questions are the most difficult ones to, to report, okay? But this topic, okay, uh, just like commands and requests, okay, it's really, really easy. We're going to work with this topic next class. And, but I, I need you guys that you learn the structures and you know how to use present, uh, how to use present simple, how to use a uh, past perfect, how to use a uh, past continuous, etc., etc., guys. Okay, that's why it's very, very necessary for you. And and that's it. And you'll see that report to speech is not a big a big thing, guys. Okay, okay, guys. So hopefully you have enjoyed this video, guys. It was a lot of work. I mean, this video you like with the book, but hopefully you like this video and see you next class. Remember, guys, be safe, stay at home, and see you next class, guys. Okay, so Luigi, out. Bye.